Welcome to Florence, the capital of Tuscany, a city of art, rich history and a vibrant nightlife. In this comprehensive travel guide to Florence, you will get everything you need for your amazing trip. And watch the video until the end to get one secret tip. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights Hello guys! Hello! It's Love Fiat Nations. Thank you for watching our video. My name is Alice and this is Mario. If you like our content, consider subscribing to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. It would help us out a lot. Without any further ado, let's hop on to the video. Even if I'm falling down, I Before starting to explore the city, you need to figure out how to get there. The easiest way to reach the city is by plane. Florence has a medium-sized airport reachable within half an hour from the city center. As an alternative, there is the airport of Bologna, which you can reach in less than one and a half hours. From the airport to get into the city, you have two options. You either take a taxi or hop on the Vola in Bus Airport Shuttle, which runs from 5.30 am to 11 pm. Another possibility is to come here by train. The main station of Santa Maria Novella is located in the heart of the city and you can reach your hotel easily by foot as long as you don't have heavy luggage to carry. If you're traveling by car or camper, the easiest and cheapest option is to leave a vehicle at the car park, drive and tramway in Villa Costanza directly at the A1 highway. This parking lot is connected to the T1 tramway line departing every 6 to 8 minutes. The tram takes only 20 minutes and stops directly at Santa Maria Novella train station. For more information please check the link in the description below. Coming from Europe, Florence is even connected with the Flixbus system. After getting to Florence you have to figure out how to get around. All the sites within the city are easily reachable by foot. If you don't have to carry heavy luggage you can walk all the way. Please note that Uber and Grab is not available in Italy, therefore if you want to take a taxi, you have to take an official cab. You have also the option to rent a bike to explore the surrounding areas of Florence. If you need to change money, you can do it easily at the airport or at the bank in the city. Credit cards are widely accepted. Would you stay till the morning light? Or would you follow me? Or would you let it be? If I leave tonight, we could do this right. We'll find the remedy. Or would you stay with me? Weather and climate. Tuscany has a Mediterranean climate. The best months to visit are from April to June. The average day temperature in these months is about 24 degrees Celsius. We do not recommend going there in July and August as the weather is very hot and it gets too crowded. We recommend booking a hotel or an apartment in the old town of Florence. No matter if you're staying at Piazza Santa Croce or at the main square Piazza del Duomo, you have all the sites reachable within walking distance. You don't have to spend much on your hotel room, all the there accommodations available for every budget. Here are our favorites. Let's start our list with the Hotel Soggiorno Battistero. Perfectly located at the Piazza del Duomo, it offers a beautiful view at the dome. The second hotel is not for people on a tight budget. The luxury hotel Portre Firenze is located directly at the Ponte Vecchio and offers a beautiful vista on the river and the bridge. The third entry on our list is on a medium price range. The Grand Hotel Minerva is located directly at the Basilica Santa Maria Novella and offers a pool and a beautiful view over the rooftops of Florence. Let's talk about safety. Florence is a very safe city to travel. Even at night a lot of people populating the streets. Although, as in every other city, Pay attention to pocket pickers. If you need a gadget to carry your passport, cash and cell phone safely, please check the link in the description. Florence is a relatively scam-free city, so you don't have to be too careful about getting screwed over. But there is one thing you have to be careful of. There are people selling bracelets wanting you to try them. And as soon as you try them on, you have to pay 5 or 10 euro for the bracelet you don't want. So don't give them your hand and don't let them touch you. Otherwise, you're completely safe in the city. Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore. If coming to Florence, you cannot miss to visit the stunning cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore, covered in white marble. 
together with the adjacent bell tower, the Campanile di Giotto and the Baptistry of St. John make them one of the most beautiful sites of the city. We strongly recommend go there early in the morning or book your tickets online in advance because the queue can get very long. The Uffizi Museum and the Academia Gallery If you're into art or not, you have to stop by at the Uffizi Museum to visit the amazing Renaissance masterpieces of different artists, such as The Birth of Venus from Sandro Botticelli. At the Academia Gallery you can find a famous statue of David by Michelangelo. As for every site in Florence, be aware to come early or book your tickets in advance. For watching a sunset, the best possibility is to walk up to Piazza Michelangelo where you find a beautiful vista over the city with live music and a relaxed crowd to enjoy the end of the day. One of the most famous sites in Florence is of course the Ponte Vecchio you'll see on all the pictures of the city. It's connecting one side of the city with the other side. It has a rich history and is filled with jewelry stores. If you're planning to spend one day a little bit more relaxed, check out one of the beautiful gardens in Florence. The Giardino delle Rose and Giardino Bardini are the perfect spot to experience a spectacular view over the city combined with the amazing atmosphere of nature and flowers. After you visited all the sites, you might get hungry. So let's start talking about eat and drink in Florence. You don't necessarily have to book a room with breakfast as there are many cafes and bakeries around every corner. You can taste a freshly baked croissant or sandwich together with an authentic Italian cappuccino for around 5 euro. The so-called aperitivo is almost a tradition in Italy. Italians like to have a few appetizers and a typical aperol spritz at the bar before dinner. Usually there is a buffet full of finger food and appetizers. Prices range from 8 to 12 euro per person, including one drink. Regarding dinner, you are spoiled for choice. There are countless amazing and tasty restaurants all over the city. Just by strolling through the streets, you will find one that fits your needs. The one thing you really don't want to miss out on is a classical Fiorentina steak in one of the many Osterias. For lunch, we recommend trying a focaccia at least one time. It's a kind of pizza bread with ingredients of your choice. The most famous one you'll find at the Osteria all'antico Vinaio in Via dei Neri. Due to the hot weather in Florence, it's recommended to get an ice cream whenever you have the possibility to. The quality and the variation in Florence is truly spectacular. Our favorite ice cream shop is the Gelateria dei Neri in Via dei Neri. It's especially known for the natural ingredients and the fluffy texture. Prices in Florence are comparable with the rest of Europe. Especially wine and coffee is very cheap in Italy. An espresso, for example, is about 1 euro. The average price for a meal is about 15 to 20 euro per person, including drinks. Consider exploring side streets to save a little bit of money. Especially at the main places, prices are very high in comparison to smaller local restaurants. Something unique about Italy's restaurants is the cover charge, reported separately on the bill as Il Coperto. It is added to the total amount of the bill for the use of cutlery, napkins, glasses, etc. The average amount to pay is about 2 euro 50 per person. The coperto is not a tip, but tipping is not common or mandatory in Italy. Let's talk about the nightlife in Florence. Florence is a very vibrant city with a lot of young people. Therefore you find a lot of bars on every corner of the street. Just stroll around and experience the Italian nightlife. People tend to celebrate on the streets directly in front of the bar. So you won't have difficulties finding a spot you really like. Our favorite district for nightlife is Santa Croce district, or one of the many rooftop bars all over Florence. I really wanna know, really wanna know. Now let's go on to the secret tip we have promised at the beginning of the video. If you're coming with the car to Florence, there is one spot marked at the map here where you can park your car for free. It's a very convenient and free way to park your car in Florence. This completes our guide to Florence. If you have any tips for fellow travelers, leave a comment down below and give the video a thumbs up. Have a wonderful day and see you next time. Bye! Bye.